fantasy stories? Are they real or just mere imagination? Something we all think about when growing up. But alas, we are always reminded of the impossibilities of anything being real. But what if we say not everything is a mere fantasy, but that some parts are real? Are you aware of the legend of the Phantom Queen? And we're not talking about the Queen of England, who looks hauntingly young for her age, and the not-so-cool side of all royal family memes. But this is a different kind of queen, the one that will keep you up at night, and she's Irish. We are not talking about Conor McGregor, who is a different drama queen altogether. This is as violent as when he knocked hot sauce off the table and threatened to punch in his opponent's face. This is the queen, the queen of the men. She is strong and fearless. She looks like she bench-pressed during the French Revolution and carries a mean smile. Enough talk, let's dive into her story. Her name is Morrigan, James Morrigan. Hmm, sounds kinda cool. Just kidding, it's just Morrigan. And for the sake of information, this one is just a single entity. This goddess is a trio of sisters, and their superpower? That's the real deal. They can take the form of a single goddess and can shapeshift. How cool is that? Morrigan was the queen of death, battle, and destiny. She was the keeper of fate and the Irish goddess of prophecy. Overall, she resembles the scary symbol of death of too many characters of Irish mythology. So, why is this lady portrayed like that? To give a slight hint, she's basically the anti-hero of Irish mythology. Something like Deadpool or Morrigan Pool, if you could say. You'll get it. And don't let the name fool you, the Morrigan is also associated with several sacred and natural sites across Ireland. She is the goddess of people and territory, especially if it's an octagon. And with that, we conclude our last Conor McGregor joke. Come on guys, he's Irish too, it's not our fault. Wait a minute, is that who he prays to before stepping into the octagon? Goosebumps, never mind. Okay, now moving on. For Irish people, she resembled strength and power and was or might still be the symbol of courage. They would hoist her up when they went to war, giving them the courage they needed to win. They believed that they had the blessing of winning when they worshipped her. You know what we're talking about when your mom promises to buy you a PS5 if you get straight A's and then the best they do is ice cream? <sighs> That's a pain. Let's talk about her origin. The Libor Gabala Eren, a book of the conquest of Ireland, marks a dedicated story that explains the origin of the people of Ireland. Morrigan is listed as the daughter of Ernmas, the mother goddess. Ernmas herself was the daughter of Nuada, king of the magical Tua de Danen, better known as the tribe of the goddess Dan. Morrigan's father, however, remains unknown. Morrigan was married to the Dagda, a good god and one of the kings of the Tuatha de Danen. Although scholars have found similar figures in Celtic lore, Morgan is a specific part of Irish mythology. Le Fay was one of the most significant antagonists of Arthurian legend, who shared many attributes with Morgan. Both were shapeshifters and prophets who were seen in various literature throughout the world. While a few pupils believe the figures' names to have stemmed from the identical etymological root, Morgan and Morgan have totally separate meanings in Welsh and Irish, making the relationship tenuous in quality. She would often appear as a crow in the myths, and we're inclined to agree the more we think that crows do definitely strike a level of fear in our hearts, and that they look too sketchy. No, seriously, have you noticed a general characteristic where there are a lot of crows? If yes, it's always in a dry and lonely place. Morgan has a very intimate relationship with blood. She would always appear in blood-stained clothes. Not sure what all of that is about just yet, but hold on, we do have some info on that. In the pictures in which she is historically depicted, she would wear a long white skirt covered in blood to symbolize battle and bravery. Well, since they did not have washing machines back in the day, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Being scary wasn't the only description of her god job. Her role in Celtic mythology is pivotal to her entire existence. Morrigan is the goddess of battle, and her methods in the war zone have made her stand out among the other gods. It's her decision whether or not a person should live or die. Stroll off the field of conflict or are carried off upon your shield. That's what she'll decide for you if you ever fight in an actual war. Morrigan is also seen supporting the ones whom she favors in battles with her sovereign power. Well, that reminds us, isn't Athena the goddess of battle in Greek mythology? So doesn't that mean Morrigan is another form of Athena or vice versa? 
appears it's not the same. Athena's techniques were way different than Morrigan's due to her being a perfectionist. Not to mention she's the goddess of wisdom as well, so she needs to balance it out with war. Nonetheless, both were feared by all. Talking about Morrigan, she's been the fiercest goddess. Being one of the three war goddesses is quite the challenge. She had to keep up or be better than Macha and Naaman. Suffice it to say, she was indeed problematic and a lot different from other gods doing the same job in different mythologies. The Morrigan was regarded as the embodiment of death in Celtic mythology. She would appear on the battlefield as a raven or crow and carry the deceased away. As the prophetess Niamen, her violent screech and war cry indicate that death is imminent. She frightened, terrified, and confused soldiers on the battlefield, causing them to perish or fright or mistake their buddies for an enemy. While the Morrigan depicted more violent deaths, Thanatos, the Greek deity, was just the reverse. This person represented the Greek deity of non-violent deaths. Thanatos' killing touch was mild, similar to that of his brother Hypnos, the god of sleep. While the Morrigan was an important figure in Celtic mythology, Thanatos was regarded as a minor deity and was frequently represented as a personified spirit of death rather than a god. Fifty Shades of Morrigan Sounds cheesy? Well, the crow goddess also had a love story, and a long one. Morrigan met Kul Chulain while the mighty warrior was defending the province of Ulster from Queen Maeve and her army. With Ku's first sight, Morrigan fell for him. The goddess tried her best to weaken Ku's knees on her immense beauty, but failed. Things start to get interesting from here on. Morrigan shapeshifted into an eel and swam to Kul Chulain. He punched at the eel and managed to hurt it. Morrigan then transformed into a huge wolf. She ran at the herd of cattle and drove them to Kuchulain. Ku used his infamous slingshot and temporarily blinded the goddess. It hit her straight in the eye, but that didn't stop the goddess either. She transformed again, and this time into a cow. Ku again hit the goddess with a stone that broke her leg. This was Morrigan's way of hindering Ku while he was in battle because he rejected her love. When Ku Chulain was eventually killed, she settled on his shoulder in the form of a crow. Ku Chulain's misfortune was that he never recognized the feminine power of the goddess. On all four occasions, she appeared to declare love for him, but Ku failed to recognize her. For her last attempt, even after Ku wounded Morrigan, she came to him as an old hag. Seeing the miserable sight of the old lady blessed her. Ku's blessings were enough to heal Morrigan's wound, but yet again he did not love her. While on his way to his final battle, Ku Chulain noticed the washer at the ford, who admitted to having seen and heard Morrigan washing the clothes and arms of Ku Chulain, who would soon be dead. Experts argue that her name comes from Indo-European roots, as her name means more nightmare in the older versions of English. She was indeed one for Ku, at least. Her name also has proto-Celtic roots, as her name Morrigan loosely translates to the Phantom Queen in some older versions of Celtic language. Morrigan was sometimes styled as Morigu. Both Morrigan and its many other variants were occasionally used as generic names for supernatural female figures. Do you know something? She's also a movie star. Morrigan is quite a prominent figure in the popular media and has a solid deal of cultural relevance in the modern world. She is the powerhouse of fantasies and legends. She plays a formidable triad of ladies in the Canadian television series Sanctuary. She also appears in the Canadian fantasy television series Lost Girl as the Morrigan, the Dark Phase leader. She's also respected in the comic book community. After all, why not? Morrigan has also appeared in various comic book series, including Marvel Comics and The Wicked plus The Divine, where she is depicted as a strong goddess in the Celtic pantheon. Finally, she appears in a number of video games, notably Darkstalkers and the Dragon Age franchise. But why is she so important? She was the symbol of hope and had encouraged young women to stand up for themselves in a fight. Those were the times in Europe when women were way more oppressed than they are today. And believe us, she worked a charm. What are your views on Morrigan? Is she charismatic or deadly in your opinion? Leave a comment below. Sayonara!